Every four years, the world's best swimmers test their skill and stand Olympic competition. And every four to discuss their theories and methods of training. For a sprinter, Bobby McGregor, he has a beautiful hand entry and a long pull. He uses a strong six-beat kick and he lies very flat in the water. Don Scholander is a definite six-beat swimmer. He is a good sprinter, but is a great middle distance swimmer. He does not ride as high in the water as Steve Clark. However, he uses his legs more in a 100 or 200 meters than in a 400 meter than does Clark. He rides flat in the water, and he has very little glide in his stroke, but dries his arms down and out in front of his head. He, like all American swimmers, breathes almost under his arm stroke. Mike Wall is a middle distance swimmer, differing from the sprinters as he bends his elbows more under the water. Very noticeable in his right hand how he bends his wrist, presses back and extracts the last inch of power from his stroke. A pausing action in his kick, with one foot going to the side, shows that his kick does not dominate his arms. Arm swimming strongly and the kick coming along more as a trailing, balancing action rather than a propulsive force. Alan Wood has a short action and was the most improved Australian in technique at Tokyo. He has a high elbow recovery and enters the hand quite short in front of the head. His catch is deep and from the instant of entry there is no glide in front. The arm commences pulling immediately. Alan has a considerable bend at his elbow on the pull through and this is purposely attempted to offset a dropped elbow fault he had. He breathes quite late and his kick is narrow and irregular. Terry Gathercole says, Alan uses a more vigorous action and has a greater stroking rate per lap than the majority of distance swimmers. Alan does not emphasize pressing back to his thigh, pulling out slightly shorter, allowing him more strokes, and this compensates for not pressing back so far, and therefore he takes more strokes per lap. Roy Sari swims with a glide on one arm and has a definite catch-up in front with his hands. He swims with a standard overarm crawl plus a trudgeon type kick. He rolls on one side when he takes his breath and as the head returns to the middle he emphasizes a big scissors kick. He drags his legs most of the time except when he takes a breath then he gives a big thrust with his legs. In not kicking hard, he doesn't overwork his diaphragm and, is, and so is able to do much better over the distances. When he sprints, this notable leg drag is speeded up and so he obtains greater speed from his legs. Dawn Fraser, the world's greatest woman swimmer, uses fantastic control in her stroking technique. In front you see her right and left hand pressing out and slightly downwards, giving her shoulders maximum control. An orthodox six-beat kick, however Dawn uses a slightly subdued kick when swimming 400 metres. She pulls down the centre line underneath the water, getting the hands into position in front and stretches back to her thigh. Lynn 
Jane Bell uses a slightly shorter stroking technique. Getting straight down to her cat, she has an orthox speed kick, although one leg goes out slightly when she breathes. Wendell has the same fluid movements as other tops. High elbows on the recovery, and this allows the fingers and hand to enter first. He turns his head for a breath when his arm is pushed well into the water and well out in front. Bobby carries his head rather high in comparison with most distance stars. He has a hip sway in his action when he is viewed from the top. This no doubt occurs because of his irregular leg beat. Under the water, Bob has a few faults. He always experienced difficulty in keeping his right hand in a strong position. It wasn't until he began laying off that he could achieve what was aimed at. Even during the stress of competition, he had to concentrate hard on technique. Tokyo Swimming Stadium, as Roy Sari, the world record holder, and the determined Bob Windle prepare to start in the 1500 meters Olympic Classic. The metric mile affords the opportunity of contrasting the styles of today's top distance swimmers. fast pace set by Bob Windle took him to a decisive win over the determined finish of the American John Nelson. Nineteen fifty six saw a further development in the field of swimming. Butterfly became a separate division, and who better to show this than Australian Kevin Berry. Kevin Berry has a high body position. His hips are well up with little vertical movement. The only movement being at the moment of breathing. He drops his shoulders slightly on entry and his head just prior to the hand entry. He uses the classical keyhole action. His hands and fingers first enter approximately shoulder width. There is then a pull around and back under the body. The hands almost touching at the end of the pull. His kicking action is fairly even. Kevin has a very strong butterfly technique, and there is no doubt of his great strength. Wide arm entry, his head going forward with his arms well underneath the center line of his body. Hands practically touch. Pressing right back to his thighs with a whipping up and down double dolphin. He keeps his kick fairly close within his body line. Wide entry, head going forward. Good coordination. Breathing, then head down keeping his hips well up. It may seem as if he is diving forward under the water, but he keeps his hips up, using his shoulders, then his feet, and his dolphin kick. He breathes when his hands are about to finish the press, head going forward with the arms, then he bends his, his elbows and presses back. His hips stay fairly close to the surface of the water, not diving down. Keeping his hips up, that is the fulcrum, as it were. Shoulders, and legs moving from the hips. Carl Roby, to my mind, 
is the most beautiful butterfly swimmer in the world today. He is very high in the water and his slim legs and big upper body give him wonderful flotation. He uses a similar timing to Kevin Berry. Fred breathes later than most fly swimmers. He gets his breath at the end of the pull instead of the beginning. He must be careful not to hold his head too high on the breathing in or he will not get his head down again for the recovery. Sharon Stouter is able to keep her head high with very little drop of her shoulder. She uses intermittent breathing, that is when she feels she needs a breath. Ada Cock of Holland uses a lower technique than Sharon Stouter. She keeps her shoulder line down very low on the surface and doesn't bring her arms very high in the recovery. Her head goes forward with her arms, more like the Australian method of breathing than the later breathing technique used by the majority of American swimmers. In the final of the 200 metres men's butterfly, Fred Schmidt, Kevin Berry and Carl Roby show the comparative styles which have taken them to the top in butterfly. powerful stroking used by world record holder Kevin Berry won for him victory over the strong finish of American Carl Roby. In backstroke, Jed Graff of America shows his classic action. Since the Olympic distance has become 200 metres, not only speed, but endurance is now essential. Terry Gathico comments. Jed Graff demonstrates the ideal stroking we are trying to have our swimmers achieve. That is, a bent arm action and pressing down, finishing with the palm practically turned to the bottom of the pool. Lying as flat as possible in the water, the catch behind the head, and pressing down as though he had a handful of water and was throwing it down towards his feet. So powerful and so very, very strong. Thompson Mann has a similar action to Jed Graff, but being a sprinter, he moves his arms faster and so does not obtain the same bend as does the taller Jed Graff. He carries his legs lower than the other boy, but is able to keep his hand higher than his hip, particularly on the left arm stroke.
Kathy Ferguson has a straight body line, and her hands enter well behind her head. The mouth is open, breathing, in, out, in, out, coordinating the breathing with the arms. This is a very good point. Christine Caron is a wonderful competitor. The Olympics proved this. She has a straight arm recovery and attempts to place her palms down, usually about 11 and 1 o'clock. She swims with her head back. She has her legs high, but not as high as the US girls. Japan's Tanaka has a different technique than most backstrokers. She sits up higher than most girls and almost leads with the elbow on her recovery. Ginny Dunkle of America has her head well back. She looks straight up, not at her feet. High recovery of the arms. In the 100 metres women's backstroke final, French girl Christine Caron, heard from camera in the white cap, led for almost the entire race. Exciting finish of the Olympics, Kathy Ferguson took the lead from Christine Caron to win the crown for the United States in a new world record time. <laughs> Australian swimmer Ian O'Brien is a great exponent of the new power breaststroke. Terry Gathercole comments on this leading breaststroker's style. Ian O'Brien attempts in his breaststroke to swim with the least possible resistance. O'Brien, as he kicks his legs around, keeps his feet up within the, his body line. This is achieved by balancing his feet with his head. His head goes forward with his arms. This has the tendency to keep his hips and feet up at the end of his kick. The result creates less resistance. The arm movement is comparably short, pulling around and not behind the shoulder line getting his elbows into his side. When he pulls around underneath, it is interesting to note how his hands turn over at the bottom of the pool. This allows him to make an easier recovery. He lets his head go forward with his arms to bring his feet up. His breathing is at the end of the pool. No pausing movement in front, pushing his hands forward in the recovery. He has a narrow leg kick, whipping around, getting a rounded action into it, but at all times trying to keep his feet up, so endeavouring to create less drag. Using the typical breaststroke action of the one-stroke underwater, he pulls down to his thighs with a long arm pull. Glide, kick and recover. One-stroke underwater. A strong push, glide, pull down to his thighs. Then kick and recover. Head up, beginning his second arm movement on the surface. His legs are close to the surface when he comes up to commence his kick. At times, they are almost breaking the surface. Georgie Prokopenko pulls very wide as compared to our boys. In fact, in general, he is not as tight as our swimmers or those of the rest of the world for that matter.
Chet Chesremsky uses a short and very powerful arm action. In the 200 meters men's breaststroke final, the power breaststroke style was competently shown by all competitors. Playing a waiting game, O'Brien displayed perfect judgment in trailing the leaders Prokopenko and Jastrzemski. In the final stages, he gradually narrowed the gap to draw level and in the last strokes inched ahead to win the gold medal. As the games draw to a close, the record books show the results of four years' intensive planning, applied techniques and hard work have been richly rewarded. In Tokyo swimming, 12 new record times were established. Every Olympic mark was shattered. But what of the future? Probably.